Okay, Coach Rochelle. Coach Rochelle, I, here's my question to you. A lot of shade thrown at you, man. You get a lot of disrespect. So you didn't get the memo, but you're from Kentucky and you're not supposed to be a Division One All-American. You were a two-time All-American. And then Willie Saylor, I don't know if he sent the memo over. I know he sent a message, but you weren't supposed to win Pan Ams either. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of background is when I signed with Wisconsin, I had three or four coaches from the state of Kentucky say I bit off more than I could chew going to the Big Ten, going to Division One, And so I've always had those little chips on my shoulder. Um, I'm a Kentucky guy, and there's not a lot of respect for that state, but there's some good kids there. And so I wanted to help prove a point a little bit. I always thought I was never good enough. Um, but the Pan Am thing, they really had your opinion. Um, and yeah, I, I did. I did my thing down there, and I've, I've been wrestling well, and we'll see if I uh, wrestle again. So here's the next thing. You didn't get into the trials. No. Okay, I just got to frame this in. You didn't get into the trials, but if you were at the World Championships right now, I think you'd actually be seated because uh, you won a Continental. Yeah, they said I had points. You had uh, points, so you'd have been close to being seated by a top four guy. Yeah. The separation criteria. Yeah. My mind's blown when I hear something like that. And then we don't let you, USA Wrestling doesn't let you into the trials. Does, um, that, does that keep the chip, uh, the Kyle Rochelle chip on the shoulder? Um, it just, I use little things like that as fuel. Um, and... I think there needs to be things that motivate each person. And some people it's family, some people it's God, some, some people it's people telling you you can't do things. Um, I've kind of always gone towards that, people telling me I can't do things and trying to prove them wrong. And um, it's not about that, but it just gives me that extra motivation when I, when I do things. Um, I always try and do things the right way. And yeah, I mean, I thought I had done enough to maybe get a, a wild card, but they don't do wild cards anymore. They won the, they have won the system, Pan Ams, dude. And they said I didn't, didn't go through their system. And I got to respect it. It's USA Wrestling. It's their thing. But um, we'll see what, down the road what happens. And then you, you wrestle the style, this like funk style, the step over, cradle, funk, leg pass style. I don't know if Barry Davis had that in mind. Oh, you guys, you guys don't know? Barry Davis is a scrambling master. Um, <laughs> And Barry, Barry taught me a lot of things, and uh, he'll always be my coach, and we did a lot of detail stuff, a lot of basics, that's what Barry's always great at, one-on-one -on -one type stuff, bringing you in at 6 a.m., going over, deep, beating a two-on-one. <laughs> um, but I kind of developed my own style, like I talked about today, it's, it's an art form. He taught me the basics, and then I made my own, my own artwork, and um, I think Barry was great, but I, I kind of just evolved it into scrambling technique that I, I used more, because I was long, and I, it worked for me. Does Wisconsin, would you say that you guys don't really have a, a style like that? And like, you know, everybody says the Iowa style. You know, the Penn State style is get the most super talented guys on the planet and, you know, put them out there and, and let them go. I mean, all the, these colleges have styles. Are, mm -hmm. what, what, is, what would you say Wisconsin um, style is? We recruit kids on, I mean, we have to recruit them by academics, and we recruit them on just the type of kids they are. Um, we want kids coming into the locker room that are happy to see each other, not picking on each other and be like, oh, I got so-and-so right next to me and he's just going to give me crap for 30 minutes before practice and it creates a bad um, atmosphere for your room so we recruit the types of kids and then try to develop them individually and really hammer the basics like i was saying hammer the basics and then make it your own it's i mean wrestling you can have a guy that just does front headlocks and a guy that does nothing but scrambles and can win, beat both can win a national title and so it's all about the basics and just being confident in your positions and whatever I know you've told the Pan Am story a couple times, but you were literally only the only guy that USA Wrestling could send at 74 kilos who had a visa. Right. And, and so, that's the story, right? Yeah. So the, at the uh, US Open um, out in Vegas, they came up to me and they asked, like, you still have your visa, right? And I was like, yeah. Uh, it's a 10-year one from when I went to Brazil three years ago. And um, they're like, well, we might need you to make 74 kilos. How, like, what do you weigh? I was like, oh, I get down to the that almost every day after practice. Wrestle with like Isaac Jordan and those guys. So it was nothing for me. I said I can make that in like two days if you need me to. Um, and they called me up the Sunday before we left saying, hey, we need you. It's like, for the US, I'll do anything for you know? And um, it was a great opportunity. I went down there and it was one of those things where it's the first time I've ever had, to, I've got like, was chilling by the pool, reading a book before weigh-ins. I didn't have to cut any weight or anything. It was the That's first crazy. time ever. And um, weighed in, felt great. Um, and it was fun to compete again. Uh, I think you lose that sometimes a lot later in your career. Now it's, I took a couple of years off, uh, neck injury, I had a neck fusion done, and that's why I stopped. And then um, I found that little bit of drive again, so it, it was fun.
So winning the gold medal, like, what did that do to you, like, confidence-wise, knowing that you can compete with the best internationally? Um, it, it did a couple things. Um, you know, Jordan Burroughs right now, in my opinion, he's the best guy. And James Green, I think he's the best guy. And so those are the two guys that you would need to beat. Um, not just in the nation, but in the world, too. So I still got a, a lot to do um, if I ever did, if I decide to come back, for sure. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it shows, like, just relaxing. In, in just being confident when you walk out on the mat, nothing to lose. I, I had nothing to lose. They go, you weigh in, that's a win for us. Because you just need somebody to weigh in. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to just weigh in. And so I didn't have anything to lose, no pressure, and I just walked out there and had a great time. You crushed everybody, too. Didn't you? I, I you smacked everybody. Yeah. You smashed everybody. Okay, so then you hear about this guy, this little bald guy in Texas, <laughs> is trashing you. What are you, were you like? What's going on? Um, yeah, um, I I didn't really know what was going on, and my mom got after him a little bit on Twitter, going back and forth, and I thought it was kind of funny. But yeah, I mean, I didn't do, do anything wrong. I, I stepped up when I was needed, and that's what that's what I think as a sport we we need people to do. And um, I did it. I went down there, had fun, and. I proved somebody wrong. No hard feelings. <laughs> no hard feelings. We, we kind of made up and we had a picture at uh, World Trials. Um, he has his opinions and, you know, he creates some great um, conversations. And so uh, you need some people like that, I guess, but I like to prove him wrong.